Welcome back to this video in this View, Beautify and Firebase series. In the last video of this series, we added the functionality to edit an existing meetup, at least the title and the description. Now I want to be able to add the time and the date. So let's implement this functionality in this video. Let's dive right into it and the approach generally is pretty much the same I used before. In the last video in the series, we created this edit meetups, uh, meetup details dialog, which we simply open whenever we click that button next to a given meetup. So if I quickly sign in with my account with which I created that meetup on a given meetup, for example, this one, we have this edit button we can click. Now, I want to have a similar edit button down there next to the title and the time so that I can edit that. And for that, I will create a new component in the edit folder here. I'll name it edit meetup date dialog to start with the date. Now that is of course a dot view file. And in that dot view file here, I now will follow a comparable approach as before in that other dialog file here. So obviously we have our template here and in that template, I'll add a V dialog wrapper. And again, that's just what we did here too. Then we'll have an activator and then a card with a container. Actually, I'm copying the template of the other meetup dialog and I'll enter it here. Now, of course, I won't reuse the entire dialog. I could just use the component if I plan to do that. Instead, what I wanna do is here, for example, on that button, I won't use a fab button here. I'll use a normal button. And I won't use an icon in there. Instead, I'll just want to say add a date here. So this should really be a normal button. Now, I still will use the model with added dialog. I'll add this to my data property soon. I'll leave the width as it is. Now in the container, I want to use a layout. I will say edit, edit meetup is okay or edit meetup date maybe as a card title. Now inside the card though, I now of course want to have my date picker. So here we got the divider with another row and now it's inside here that I want to change something. So I'll get rid of the vcard text here and I'll get rid of the divider and the bottom row here so that I only have one layout, one row in my grid. And in here, I now want to add my uh, my date picker. So I'll add V date picker here. And this V date picker here needs to be bound to a date property. So I'll bind it with V model to editable date. Now this property doesn't exist yet. I'll add it soon though. I also want to set a style where I set the width to 100% so that it uh, fills the complete dialog, that the state picker fills out the complete dialog. So with that, we got the date picker set up. Now, one other thing I'll add is the actions property to indicate that I want to be able to cancel this because obviously I maybe just want to stay to stick to the old date and don't want to have to pick a new date. Now inside we date picker, I now add a template where I set the scope and we've used this feature before in this video series. This simply allows me to set the save and cancel button so that both are displayed on the date picker again so that I can quit this process and opt in to not pick a date. So here inside my template, I now want to add two buttons with we button. The first one will get a class where I'll set the text to blue with blue text, darken one, and I'll say close here. Now on that button, I want to give it a flat style and on a click on it, I want to set edit dialog, which is this property we haven't added yet, but which will determine whether we see the dialog or not. So I will set this to false here and I'll split it over multiple lines to make it a bit easier to read. So here, when we click the button, I basically close the dialog. Now I'll duplicate this button on the second button though. I want to save the date we now picked. So here, I will call a different method. I will call on save changes. This is my template setup for now. We'll see if it needs more fine tuning, but let's go with that for now. Now I will add my script here. 
below the template. Now in a script, I will of course export my default view instance for that component. And I expect to get the meetup as a prop so that I get the meetup data there. I also will set up data and return an object here as we always do. And in that object, I now want to have both edit dialog, which will determine whether we see the dialog or not. And I want to have the editable date, which is the date the user picks. And we have to differentiate between the date we already have on the meetup, which I don't want to override automatically, and the one the user picked. Because if I click into the date picker, pick a different one and click cancel, if I were to set the pick date immediately, once I click on a date, equal to the meetup date, I would overwrite it even if I cancel. Now I don't want to do that. Therefore, I will have two different date objects here so that they don't interfere. So with that, I'll add two properties here in the object. Edit dialog, which is false initially, so the dialog is not showing up initially. And then editable date, which is null initially, because the user hasn't picked one. When that's not like this, we have to enter a white space to fit the linting rules. The next thing I want to add is a method. So I'll add the methods property here. And I want to add the on save changes method, which of course is executed when we click the save button here. Now in on save changes, the idea is to save the date. Now for that, we need to initialize the editable date first though, because if I open the date picker here, I want to ensure that the first date which is selected is the actual meetup date. Now we get the meetup as a prop. So what I'll do before I add my method is I'll add the created hook here. And there I will set this editable date, which I'll set equal to a new date where I pass this meetup date into the constructor. So that I construct a new date based on the old date of the meetup. And this editable date is bound to the date picker, so it should be selected automatically at startup. Now in on save changes, I now want to take the updated editable date, so the date the user may have picked, and store that in my store and on the server again. So for that, I'll first of all create a constant new date. So that's the new date the user picked. And here I will initialize a new date object. I will pass this meetup date to it though. And that's not equal to editable date because that may have changed in the meantime. Keep in mind, it's bound via two-way binding here. So with that new date here, I now want to get the new day the user picked. So for that, I can create a new date where I pick this editable, whoops, editable date into it. Now, why am I taking this approach? Why don't I use just this editable date? Because of the way Viewify returns me this date. It happens to be that it's much easier to work with it if I take the return value by the date picker, Vue.js, Vue.defy, excuse me, Vue.defy gives me and put it into new date to standardize it basically. So now I'm just creating a new date based on the date the Vue.defy date picker gave me back. And that is a really nice way of having a definitely correct date to work with. Now on this new date, I can call getUTCDate. And this will give me the day of this date. Now we'll repeat this for month and year. So here I'll get UTC month. And then here new year is not first January, but instead is the full year, get UTC full year. So with that, I'm simply just making sure that I take the editable date, turn it into a format I can definitely work with and can retrieve that data with these helper methods. Now I can take the new date I already have, which is based on my original meetup date, and simply update all these things by using new date and then setting the UTC date to new day. Whoops, new day here. And so on. And I also need to do this for the month, which I'll of course set equal to new month. And then I'll use new year here to set the UTC full year. So I'm first retrieving it from the updated date and then I'm setting it on the old one. And with this, and with the old one, just a side note, I of course mean a new date based on the old one, not directly on the old date stored in the meetup. 
So with that, I got my new date and now I need to dispatch it to the update meetup data action, which we already created in the last video. So I'll use this store dispatch and I want to dispatch to update meetup data here. And the payload I want to pass is the ID. This is this meetup ID and the date, which is new date. Now with that, I'm dispatching this to that action. And if we have a look at the store we created, if we have a look at the update meetup uh, data method, I'm already checking whether payload includes the date, in which case I update the date with the payload date. And that's just the date, a lot of dates I'm passing here. So this update meetup data should be fully reusable. So let's try it out. Let's save everything to make sure we have an updated project. And let's use this button here. To use it, I'll take my edit meetup date dialog and I need to register it globally. So I'll go to the main.js file where I also registered my edit meetup details dialog uh, component. And first of all, I'll import my own new one. So edit meetup date dialog could be a name. It's in the edit folder, but it's named date dialog. And now I want to register it. So here, that's the dialog, that's the component I want to register. I will adjust the um, selector, of course, that shall now be the date dialog here at the end. So that's my super short tag name of my own component. Now in the meetup.view file, I want to add it as I just said next to the date. So we have the title and here we have the date and the location. And here I simply want to add a new div below and add my own new component, which of course needs the meetup as an input. So colon meetup refers to meetup. So that is how I ensure that I pass this meetup into this component by via property binding. I also want to make sure that I only see this as the creator. So I'll add v if user is creator, that's a computed property we already use up there on the other um, dialog. So now if I save this, here we see edit date. Now let me reload this quickly. I'm logged in, I see edit date here. If I click it, we see the date picker here. It's the 18th August, which I guess was the default date before. Let me quickly reload this again to really be sure that this is the case. Yet, it's the 18th August. So that's selected. If I pick the 24th August now and I hit save, now we see it's August 24th. So this worked and it's selected now. If I save this again, it updates immediately. And does it update in the database too? Let's check, August 25th. So this is working really great. Now let's do the same for the time and we'll do it in the same video. So I will copy the date dialog for that. So the state dialog file and name it time dialog. Now on this time dialog file, I'll of course change some things, but the general structure is the same. Now for one, I'll change the title. It's added time on the button, added meetup time. The rest can stay as it is here at the top at least. Of course, we use a V time picker, not a V date picker. We use editable time here as a property name. Seems more appropriate for working with times. I'll leave the style. I'll set the format to 24 hours for this time picker here. And I'll also leave the actions here. Now with that, I'll also add the template to add my two action buttons. I'll leave the button regarding the closing of the dialogue and saving also sounds good. On save changes, still a fitting name. Now, if I scroll down here, a lot also still works, except for it's the editable time, of course. But here in on save changes, we need to change a lot. Before we do that, let's initialize editable time down there Still with the initial date, however, there I want to use two time string to use that as the editable time, which will then be passed to the date picker. The date picker should be able to handle this correctly. So this is the editable time. Now in on save changes, the approach will still be the same. I use new date based on the meetup date. And now I want to retrieve the hours and the minutes. I'll use the approach from create meetup here. 
where I fetch hours and minutes here with uh, regular expressions. So I'll add it here too. This time is of course incorrect, it's this editable time and now I'm retrieving that. So here I have hours and minutes and then I can set new date set hours equal to hours and for minutes set minutes whoops minutes here equal to minutes of course without semicolons. So this is now the code to set the time, the updated time. And then I still dispatch updated me data with the new date. And keep in mind, the date of course is day in a month, in a year with time. Since I initialize new date based on the meetup date, the time, month and year hasn't changed at all. I only change hours and minutes there on the original date, which is why I chose this approach. It's really flexible. It allows me to reuse update meetup data. I do pass a new date to it, though only minutes and hours have changed, but who cares? And that really gives me the flexibility I want here. Now with that, that's almost all. I'll now go back to my main.js file, duplicate this import. Now I'm importing edit meetup time dialog. I'll also duplicate this setup of the com uh, component and do it for edit meetup time. And here it's also edit meetup time dialog. Now with that, we got this component too. Now let's grab this very short name, go back to the meetup and there in that div where I already set up my edit uh, date dialog, I'll also set up the edit time dialog now. And I'll do so by also passing the meetup to that and by using vf to check if the user is the creator. Now let's save this and let's try this out too. The app updates here. So this looks good. Now let's pick edit time. That's 4 p.m. and three minutes, which looks good. That's exactly what we see here. Now let's switch this to maybe 6 p.m. and hit save and it updates it. Now let's switch the date again, maybe to something in October, 26th October. Let's save that. It updates and works too. So this is now working. Now we have a way of changing the date and the time through dialogues we open with these buttons here, which is really a convenient way of interacting with that. Now, of course, feel free to fine tune this to your needs. For me, this is how I wanna have it. The next thing and one of the last things I wanna do is I want to make this register button work so that we can actually register or if we are registered, unregister for a meetup. Let's do this next.